run into problems. We run into the same type of problems that sometimes I run into on the golf course. I have a few witnesses here and they can tell you that sometimes I run into a problem. Uh, there's a tree. Uh, there's a tree and the green is that way. All right. And uh, the best thing for me to do sometimes, uh, let's say this podium was the tree and the green is that way. And the smart play or the wisdom play would be to, instead of trying to go over the tree, would be to move to the side. Because I have an instructor who tells me the first rule of trouble is get out of trouble. That's the same thing that the Holy Ghost tries to tell us. The first rule of trouble is get out of trouble. So, but oftentimes, uh, if I think I'm having a good round, if I think that I'm doing pretty good, uh, instead of me trying to remember the first rule of trouble and, and get out and hit the ball to the side so I have a clear path to the green, oh no. No, I can do it. I can make it. I'm going to hit the ball over the tree. And most of the time, my witnesses will verify this, most of the time, uh, something happens in my swing. Something happens. Either I get, uh, 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 my arms get jacked up, or, or I got too much right hand in it, or my feet start to move in it, and then I get happy feet. That's what my instructor said, I get happy feet, and they start moving, and then when I hit the ball, the ball will hit the tree, and sometimes I'm in worse trouble than I was at the first. When I did, when I did not follow the first rule of trouble, and the first rule of trouble, y'all help me remember this, the first rule of trouble is what? Get out of trouble. That's the same thing that God tries to tell us uh, with the Holy Ghost uh, because he will tell you the quick I see what God is saying. He said he will guide you into all truth. And he will tell you about things to come. Sometimes uh, there's a tree uh, in our path. And, oh, Lord, there's a tree in our path. And we say, nah, I, I'm all right. That's a small tree. Uh, no, I can get over that. Uh, you know, uh, I've been delivered from that. Yeah. Have you, uh, did you deliver yourself or did God deliver you? Huh? But the first rule of trouble is get out of trouble. Uh, so the Holy Ghost tries to tell you, no, you need to avoid that. Uh, no, you ain't ready for that. Uh, no, uh, uh, uh. but you say, no, no, no. And then when we don't listen to the lead and the guide of the Holy Spirit, what happens? Here we go swinging again. Here we go with our own efforts. Here we go and we get happy feet. But we want to run. Oh, God, we want to run to the trouble. Because, oh, God, sometimes the trouble looks good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes the trouble, uh, it, it don't look that bad. Uh, 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 sometimes we rationalize it our mind. Well, uh, I'll just hang with this for a little while. Uh, but you're going to lose some strokes. <laughs> you're going uh, to lose some time. Uh, uh, so the best thing to do is get out of trouble. So the best thing, that's why we got to be led. We have to be led by the Spirit of God. Oh, oh Lord, 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 Lord. Now listen, listen, listen. Oh, I hear the Bible saying something here. Remember, remember. Now listen, if you get yourself in trouble or if you get in trouble because you're following the lead of the Holy Ghost. Those are two different things. Two different kinds of trouble. Uh, there's a pen sometimes. Oh God, where's this golf analogy coming from? There's a pen sometimes they call a sucker pen. Uh, I tell you what a sucker pen is. On the green, they will place the flag on the green and then on the certain part of the green there's a sand trap there. There's a sand trap there. Now, the green could be this big and the flag could be over here, but, but before you get to it, there's some sand. Now, if you're not a skillful player, the smart thing is to hit the ball up on the green. And then you can just roll your ball, put your ball to the green. But those of us who are not that bright yet, those of us who think we got it all together, we will say, no, I'm going to just go for the flag. <laughs> yeah, you know, I know what I'm doing. I paid my money for this club. I've been practicing. I've been watching the golf channel. I know what to do. So we go. And all that green out there, and there's a sucker pin right there with a sand trap. And then we hit that ball. Right, and it starts off looking good because our intention is to get on the green. We hit that ball, and sure enough, we fall right into the trap. 
our balls in the trap. That's a sucker pin. And the devil is trying to get you off with some sucker pins. He's trying to get y'all with some sucker pins. They said, go for it. Take the easy way out. Take the shortcut. Do this. You ain't got to do what God said. And then you go for the sucker pin and you wind up in the trap. And sometimes there's water in the trap. And those golf balls are hard to get out when there's water in the trap. Uh, don't drown in the traps of life. Oh, Lord. Oh. Oh, Lord. Uh-uh, uh-uh. But let the Holy Ghost guide you. Yes. Hey, let he guide you. That's what Jesus said he would do. Ah, okay, let me, let me, let me read. Let me read on. Am I in 15? I'm still in 16. But when he, the spirit of truth, the truth-giving spirit comes, he will guide you into all the truth, the whole, full truth. For he will not speak, he will not speak his own message. See that? On his own authority. But he will tell all. Whatever he hears from the Father, he will give the message that has been given him. He will announce and declare to you things that are to come. If you want to know, that's why we need to acknowledge God at the beginning of our day. Uh, he knows the pitfalls, the trouble. Uh, he knows, he knows, he knows, he knows it. But sometimes we don't take the time uh, to listen. We don't take the time to consult. How can we say that we're led by the Spirit of God when we don't consult God? Or we think certain issues are, are too minuscule for God to deal with. I hear him say, acknowledge him in all your ways. And he will direct your path. There's, there is nothing so insignificant about our lives that God is not concerned with it. Uh, and see, here's the thing. To be led by the Spirit is a habit. It's a habit. huh? It's a habit. There's a yielding. I hear the Bible say, uh, talking about yielding your members, right? So in the yielding process, sometimes you have to train yourself to listen to the Spirit of God. Amen. But some of us don't want to endure the training. Mm, no, I'm, I'm grown. I do what I want to do. Jesus didn't do what he wanted to do. He said, I do always what pleases the Father. That's why he was so confident. He said, I know God's going to hear me. Every time I pray, Jesus said, he's going to hear me. Why? Because I do everything all the time that pleases him. Wouldn't we like that testimony? Huh? If we did everything all the time that God told us to do, if we did everything, you hear me say we? If we did everything all the time that God tells us to do, we can have the same testimony of Jesus. That when we pray, we know God hears us. And if he hears us, we're going to receive everything that we ask for. You talk about deliverance. Huh? We can pray for folks and we will see them delivered. But the problem is, I don't do all the time what the Spirit tells me to do. You hear me say I? Y'all want to share in that? Neither do you. We don't do all the time on a consistent basis what the Spirit tells us to do. But Jesus said this is why he came. He came to lead and to guide you into all truth. So what are you saying? Let's wrap this up. He will honor and glorify me because he will take of, receive, draw upon what is mine and reveal, declare, disclose, transmit it to you. Do you know we can live a life with a minimal amount of mistakes? No, no, but do you believe that? Yes. Huh? We can actually live a life with a minimal amount of mistakes if we are truly led by the Spirit. Okay, now I got to go a little deeper for a little bit. Bless you. The Spirit wants to lead us, to teach us, to remind us of what Jesus said. So that means that we have to go look at the teachings of Jesus. And Jesus taught us how to conduct our lives on various levels, on every level. But often, we don't conduct ourselves the way that Jesus taught us to conduct ourselves. So if the Holy Spirit comes to remind us, he's, going to re he's not going to remind us of something new. He's going to remind us of what Jesus already taught us. But the problem is that we don't look at what Jesus taught us. And he taught us 
in word and he taught us in deed. He taught us how to deal with one another in our interpersonal relationships. He taught us how to deal with employee, employer. He taught us how to deal with neighbor. He taught us how to deal with our spouses and our children. He taught us how to deal with money. He taught us all of that. He taught us how to deal with the saved people and the unsaved people, right? He taught us how to deal with them, how to live. He taught us about righteousness and about holiness. So we have really no excuse. If there's any error, then we have to admit that the error is in us. We have to admit that we're not following on a consistent basis the guide and the gentle reminders that the Holy Spirit gives us because he does give us gentle reminders. He tells us, no, don't go there. No, don't say that. He, he tries to keep us with our attitudes in check. You know, but we sometimes we disregard his promptings. We disregard his leadings and say, no, I want to do this. But he, he, the, the Spirit reminds us, a soft answer turns away wrath. But we get rid of all our soft answers because we want to get somebody told, oh, they deserve this. They deserve this. They done messed up for the last time. Uh, the, the Spirit tells us, pray for them that despitefully use you. Not pray on them. <laughs> but if somebody despitefully uses some of us, it will be hard pressed to find any inkling or symptom of a Holy Spirit at all in the actions that we take. And just can I say this, that sometimes, sometimes, we're going to have to take down sometimes. Sometimes we're going to have to make ourselves of no reputation. That's what Jesus did. He said, the Spirit's going to represent me. The Spirit's going to act on behalf of me. I hear the Bible say, let this mind be in you. That was also in Christ Jesus. So if I have the Spirit of God, do you know if I have the Spirit of God, that I have the ability to take some things? I have the ability not to fly off the handle so easily. Uh, I have the ability to do that. And so do you. But we don't, remember it, it has to be exercised with, with expected results. So Lord, help me. Help me. Not to run away from the tour guide and go on my own path. Help me, because he said he was a, he was a helper. Yes, yes. So help me, help me. I, I went a couple of times uh, with the school in years past to uh, the trip we took with the kids. We had some good tour guides, Washington, D.C., Mount Vernon, uh, Philadelphia, New York. Now I'm from New York, but I ain't no tour guide. Because mm -hmm. a lot of things have changed since 1976 when I joined the Army in Fort, in Fort Hamilton, New York. So I'm not no tour. I was born and raised. Yeah, okay, okay. You born and raised, but you ain't no tour guide. So for all of you all born and raised, fill in the blank, you still need a tour guide. Uh, God is spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You can't worship God without the spirit of God. And if you have the spirit of God, the spirit of God will lead you. He will guide you. He will remind you of what Jesus said. And then it's up to you to listen. Ain't gonna, the spirit of God is not going to make you do anything. 